What's up guys and welcome back to the Custodian YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing part three of our networking video. It's going to be a very short and sweet video, a bit like James, um, and we are going to do some, you're welcome. And we're going to do some troubleshooting. We're just going to go on a basic level. We're going to look at some spanning tree, some TDRing, check the status of some ports, very basic level, purely because this is not an instructional video. It's just kind of showing you what diagnostics you could do with the setup we've done in video one and two. So remember to stay tuned and we're gonna roll that intro. So we're connected to the switch via a serial connection. I've got it plugged in here. Um, and we're actually gonna run some commands on the switch to do some basic diagnostics. The first thing I'm gonna show you is checking the status of a switch port. Um, and then we're, gonna, then we're gonna move on to looking at um, cable diagnostics and spanning trees. So at some point, this screen will pop up in full screen so you can actually see what I'm doing, okay. Okay, so the first thing we will need to do is if you want to view the status of an interface, we're going to go on um, port 44 here. This is a switch I'm connected to. So you've got two types of show for the interfaces. You've got a show run, like this. Oh, not like that. Like this, which will show the running config, but we don't want that. We just want to show the in uh, GI044. So what this will do is it's showing me the status of this, this interface. So on here, I can see uh, here that we've got a full duplex port and it's up at one gig here. And it also tells me it's a copper connection. Um, we've also got that it's up and connected. If I disconnect it and then run the same command, it will say the line protocol is down, not connected. So the port is down, but still enabled. So this is very good for diagnostics in the way that we sometimes have customers report issues. Um, and when it's like this, we can see that the port is up on our side. The actual port itself is down um, and it's not connected. So if I reconnect this real quick, you'll see a few errors come up because we've got it plugged into another bit of kit. Um, just for demo purposes. Okay. So going back to the original show int, so now the protocol is up and it's connected, it tells us it's gigabit ethernet, gives us the MAC address of that port, gives us the port description, which James said in the last video. Um, the key for lives, whether it's full duplex, half duplex, and at what speed. So sometimes if you've got a cable that's miswired, this will actually show like 100 meg, um, half duplex, whatever it might be. So that's a very basic level. This also, this bit here also gives you various information. So you've got input errors and CRCs. This again could be a dodgy, um, say, cutler and a patch panel. It could be a dodgy cable, a dodgy RJ45 end. Um, but here you can actually see everything is hunky dory. So looking at that, that's a very basic level of understanding that. What I'll show you now is the cable di diagnostics. Now, James beside me has a pair of scissors and what we're actually going to do is we're going to cut one of the cables um, and then we're going to rerun the test so you can get an idea of what's actually happening. So if I run the cable diagnostics before, um, it will do a TDR which will basically tell us the length and how it's wired, um, whether it's wired correctly, whether there's any short circuits or whether there's just wires or cores missing. So we do test cable diagnostics and we want a TDR on this one. So we've got test cable diagnostics, TDR, and then we need the port. So we're on gig 44. Apparently it's not playing ball. Oh, of course. Okay, so now it's literally telling you what it's gonna do. Take a few seconds and then you can use the show cable diagnostics, TDR command. See the results, so if you go show, Cable Diagnostics, TDR. Hint GI04. Okay, so you can see here, 
everything on this port is normal. So on interface gig 044, which is the green cable here, I don't know if the camera's gonna pan back, but I've got a green cable next to me. You can see each pair, it gives you a length, it gives you a rough, give or take four meters. Um, and the status of that pair and my legs are dying sat down here so it gives you the status of that particular cable so this cable is perfectly fine but we can make it not fine can't we james we are so james we're only going to do this once yes so if i cut this cable i only cut it a little bit It only needs to be cut enough just to get a core that's broken and then the TDR will show it. This cable here, it's actually got two, one core broken, one actually split. We just have a little manipulation of the cable, try and touch some of the cores together again. It might do something, apparently not. But we can now run the TDR again. So if we rerun this TDR on Gig 044, again, Take a few seconds and then we can show cable diagnostics TDR, the interface interface name to show the results. Um, which would be this one. So it's it's not yet updated, so it's probably still running its test. So I just could rerun the test because it apparently didn't run. I think I um, called the results too quick on that one. So I'll give it a little second more this time. So it took a little while to get there, but now we can actually see that at roughly pair D, roughly one metre. So this is a 568B cable. So you'll have orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, white, blue, green, and this is your brown, white, brown, your pair D. And that is exactly what James has cut. So it's saying at roughly a metre, there's an open pair, which yes, it's not exactly a metre, it's probably half a metre, but it's guesstimated. It's it's just a TDR function on a switch. If you use an actual TDR tool, you're probably getting more precise reading. But this shows you that here there is a particular problem with that pair. We could use this to diagnose that it's either a bad crimp, someone's cut the cable maliciously, James, um, <laughs> or that there's just a general fault with the port. The port itself could have a fault with the pins. Um, so this, this aids in that diagnosis diagnosis so the last one we're actually going to look at uh, which I can do we're going to do port 41 but those are part of a port channel so what we need to do is we can do show spanning tree and let's go VLAN one okay and I'll also do VLAN two just so we've got them on the same screen so, so what we've actually got here is the VLAN uh, spanning tree information. So, so here, you can see it's, so for VLAN 1, spanning tree is enabled, tells you the priority, uh, and here we've actually got in information on where that VLAN is um, sitting. So if we were to do a show run on interface support channel 2, you would see that 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 interface is telling this VLAN. So, it's currently in forwarding state, um, it's got a cost, it's got a priority, and it's also got a type. That is irrelevant to us at the moment because it works. Obviously, if there was um, a fault with it, then it would show us here different information, but I don't really want to start making spelling tree faults for this video. Um, so, again, you've got the VLAN, VLAN 2, it's also in folding on these two ports. Now, you might think, how come gig 44 is still in folding state yet the cables have been cut? Because the port is still up, but it's only up at 100 meg because James cut the ground wires. So if I actually do that show in again on that interface, you will see that first glance, gig 44 is up, line protocol is up, connected. Perfect, everything's hunky-dory. If we come down here, it's only up at 100 meg. So what this is telling us is the spanning tree is working fine, the port is up, but you're only gonna get 100 meg on that port. So 
if the... Do you want to cut that cable completely? If you want me to cut the cable completely, I can. Let's cut the cable completely, because I want to just see what the spanning tree does. So now that interface is actually completely dropped off of VLAN 2 because uh, it's cut. So there you go. If there was a loop, it would show different information. Um, we're not going to simulate a loop because that's not what this video is about. But So what we've talked about is the show interface um, to actually tell us the states of the interface, where there's port errors, um, it tells us the speed etc. All, all the stuff that you're going to need for a basic level of diagnostics. We've also covered checking the spanning tree is actually in a falling state. If it's not, it could be in a blocking state because it's detected a loop or something. Who knows? Again, that's another video. And we've also covered doing a TDR um, diagnostics on the cable to give us a fault, fault distance, what pair it's on. Obviously, you would get different, different um, metrics if it were fibre because you don't have cores and you probably use an actual OTDR tester like Raf used in his my, my, In the Life of a Knock Engineer video. Um, now I'm waiting for this native VLAN mismatch to come up. Again, just so it's kind of not filling up the screen. But I'll quickly talk through what it's doing before it comes back up again. I think it's coming up every couple of minutes. Effectively what it's doing is it, is, it, it literally tells you the problem. So a bonus error we've got here, guys, is we've actually, because we cut the green cable, um, we've had to swap over the cables on this switch, and it's actually reproduced the error that I wanted to talk about. Um, so looking at this error, you've actually got quite a lot of information. So it's giving you an error message, which you can use to look up in um, Cisco documentation, so you've got CDP native VLAN mismatch. CDP is Cisco Discovery Protocol, and it's telling you that there's a VLAN mismatch between the port on this switch and the port on the other switch. Um, it, I don't know why I'm pointing with my hands. Um, so this is saying there's a VLAN mismatch discovered with Ethernet 044, and it's VLAN 2. Now, I know that this switch only has um, like a single set of 48 ports, it's a single slot switch, so it's Geek 044, and the first device is the one that you're connected to. So if we were to log on to this router, so the one that the other end is connected to at Geek 435, this and this will be back to front. But for this one, we've got VLAN mismatch discovered on Geek 044, it's currently VLAN 2. And it's telling us that the other end, which is plugged in at Geek 435. It's currently on VLAN 20, so it's kicking up a fuss about that because spanning tree kind of works when both ends are on the same VLAN. So, yeah, with this, again, it could be for this particular video, it's because that port is port 20, it's not configured to do anything special, um, so we've not gone into the config and changed it. However, if this was in production, you would need to either to save a spanning tree if you didn't need it, or if you did need a spanning tree, ensure that the correct VLAN was tagged at both ends. So that, that alert will keep coming up every couple of minutes. I think it comes up, yeah, almost every minute. Um, so yeah, it's just one of those errors that occasionally you do come across. Common cause is you plugged it in and not configured the port. I don't think it's much else to cover, is it? Okay, so that concludes uh, this video. Hopefully you all have learned something. As always, um, if you would like to write down in the bottom, uh, point out if we've missed something. Um, if you've got any questions, let us know. And uh, I don't really have a plan for the next video, so if anyone wants us to look at something very specific, feel free to mention that down below. Um, we'll see you all in the next one, and uh, happy labbing.